All right. So thank you so much for sitting down and meeting with us. Mm -hmm. We're here with Pop Dust. And I'm really excited because your debut album, Day Glow, is set to release. By the time this interview comes out, it'll be out, but September 13th. Um, how does this like album differ from your previous mixtapes and what kind of makes it the proper introduction to who you are as an artist? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. So, I mean, when I, when I say like the mixtape thing, like I don't want to take away the, the validity of the past albums. Like they're super special to me and really special to a lot of people. Um, but Fuzzy Brain, like my first record I made when I was 17 for the most part. Um, and I mean, you might know who you are, but you're not like very like aware of it, if that makes sense. And so with this record, I feel like for the first time I felt like aware of who I am, um, and like what I sound like and what I am as an artist. And, um, I just kind of found this new confidence and it felt like uh, I hadn't really like introduced myself yet. Like each album has been kind of experimental in its own way. Um, and I was just kind of making them like, like Harmony House was like, I'm going to make a Yacht Rock album and I'm going to see if I can make something like that. And People in Motion was more like, I built this synth thing, so I'm going to make an album with it. Um, and they were kind of viewed experimentally from a production standpoint. And with this album, holistically, I was like, I need it to be Dayglow and solidify what Dayglow is. Um, so yeah, I, and, and I kind of went like back to the basics of like a lot of the record I made with the same things as I did with Fuzzy Brain. Um, in reference to a lot of that time in my life. Um, but yeah, I, th I think it just comes down to like, I, I felt like I hadn't really introduced myself, you know? Yeah, hundred percent. And I feel like, especially because since you started off and you're 17, like you're so young at that point, but you feel like you're so old also at yeah. 17, yeah. like you feel like you have it figured out and like life sucks, but mm -hmm. like, you're just like, I've got it figured out, but like, what is going on? But now as you get older, like I've definitely realized I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. And thing figured out like that wasn't who I am now. So mm -hmm. I definitely get the idea of like reintroducing yourself. And I think that's a, that's a good way to start like a debut album, even though it's technically not. Yeah, totally. And, and it's, it's kind of funny because in order to like be your truest self, like in a lot of uh, psychology and spirituality, it's like return to your childlike self, you know, yeah. in order to grow up, you like return back uh, to yeah. who you were. And so with this record, I did a lot of that. And like uh, looking back at what I made before um, this was my career, yeah. uh, making music that sounded like that and felt like that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think anybody like who, well, anybody can relate to like finding your inner child, but anybody who works in like a creative field can relate to kind of having to go back and remember what it was like to create before like you were getting paid to do it. Yeah. And totally. what made you happy about that. Yeah. So like what were some of the ways that you kind of reconnected with like your inner child when you were making this album? Yeah. Yeah. I went back and listened to a lot of albums and like went back and listened to artists that I love and like they aren't artists I stopped listening to. It's just like you can get so used to like something, you know, and I, I tried to like challenge that feeling of like being used to the things that I love so much. Um, and I spent a lot of time, yeah, like referencing myself like i referenced fuzzy brain a ton on this album um yeah I, I think i did a lot of that a after people in motion um my last album i sold a lot of my gear um i just like put it online and like restarted and um with the first couple songs on this record um i made 
and finished like with the same setup I had as Fuzzy Brain. Um, so just like one guitar, the same microphone that I used um, and just my computer. Um, so yeah, just kind of like from the way I made it to like the reason why I made it, I tried to make it really intentional and like matter to me the most. Um, and yeah, I'm really proud of this album. I think it feels so like myself and like, it's so weird. Cause a lot of people, when they first hear the album, they're like, Oh, this sounds so much like day glow. It's like, what is that? What does that mean? You know? And so mm -hmm. I, I've tried to really unpack that and hold on to that feeling and trust when people say that and trust myself on like what day glow should be. Uh, and it ended up kind of being this record. So, yeah, that's great. So like who, what is the day glow sound to you? I know fans probably have one like idea, but yeah. for you, what is that ideal sound? Um, I think it revolves around the guitar quite a bit. I think I'm like a guitar guy. Um, <laughs> and like, I love synth stuff and like, I love production, but I think for the most part, it really centers around guitar driven, like dance ish, uh, indie rock, like 2010 type stuff. Like I love Phoenix. I love the strokes, um, MGMT two door cinema club, like that era of indie is like what indie is to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really not like, referenced that much in, right. in my opinion like right now um and so yeah it just feels so natural for me to make music inspired by that kind of stuff um so i'd say that's kind of what day glow is sonically um emotionally i think it's like self-aware music that is about change and uh has um deep lyrics and happy music a hundred percent i feel like i listened to can i call you tonight like an unhealthy amount of times awesome especially during like down the shore and like at the beach yeah I feel like perfect beach music yeah it's amazing because it's such a vibe which is like the worst word to use, I feel like, but like it's accurate. It's accurate. I literally the other day I was like googling synonyms for vibes because <laughs> I was like, that's not a good word. But I, I've done the same thing to uh, for interviews and stuff. It's like not be that guy that's like you know it's just a vibe, but it's yeah. true. I mean, it's it is kind of like the word because um, so much of the way I am an artist is like the way I produce and mix songs, like. Mm -hmm. um, I think that matters so much is like how it sounds rather than just like the lyrics. Um, yeah. they, they go hand in hand, but for me, it's like, it's a very musical thing. Mm -hmm. you know? And you've kind of mentioned that you write, perform, record, produce, like you mix all your music yourself. You're very hands on in that production process. How does that like approach influence the final sound of your tracks? Um, man, I mean, I feel like I'm at the point now where I can like talk about it and know what I'm doing, like, because it's really hard to know what you're doing without context. And like, you get context from other people. And so now that I've been day glow for a while, I can kind of know what I'm doing. But until recently, it was really hard to like, see myself from the outside because like i don't know why i do the things i do it's just like i just kind of do them right. um but yeah it's it's a it's a really fulfilling process i think if it could feel risky to like finish a song and like nobody else really touched it like an expert who like mixes songs and stuff um but yeah, I've just found it to be really fulfilling and, and I think rewarding as an artist and both for the fans, like that they can know where something is coming from, I think is a really 
good thing. Um, and it's not like this, uh, what would the word be like a conglomerate, like, uh, you know, pop writing camp that like made this song like a hundred people or something. Like it's literally just me from like what you hear, like it's from me on my computer to you, you know? Um, so I think that makes it really special and, and worth it. Like it might not sound the absolute best. I think it sounds good, but, um, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, it's just rewarding to like be direct to, to the, to the listener. Yeah, I agree. I think it's also super rare that you have an artist who can literally do it all like with their music. And yeah, I think it's a testament to like how you have a trust in yourself too that you can make this music and it'll be music that not only you want to hear but like other people your fans and new listeners alike they also want to hear it so i think that's yeah. great yeah um but we've kind of like touched on the 2010s and like how you kind of have that vibrant indie pop sound what is it about that era of music like is it because of the artists or like, how have you modernized it in your work? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I, I try to carry that same spirit of like, it's so easy to take all these bands and like, be like, this is what it was, but they're all very different. Like, <laughs> stylistically, like the strokes, like, we're definitely like, you know, leather jackets. Yeah. Uh, they, they've got the thing, rock. Julian Blancas is like rock, but it has this like spirit that I think is the same thing in, in a lot of ways as like MGMT or something. It's just like an era. And I think the spirit of that era was like, like kind of weird, like it, weirdness was uh, what was cool. And I think, um, stuff was really fun. And yeah, I think I just want to carry that forward as well. We're like, what is cool can also be like fun. Like, I think a lot of times cool is like, or like emotional um, mm -hmm. can only be categorized as like, maybe darker music or like more sad focused. Like, mm -hmm. that's what tends to be like, considered artistic and cool where I think artistic can also be really vibrant and like really fun. Um, and so I try to make that be my mission to like make music that's cool and the cool kids like, um, but also that it's really fun and, um, you know, uh, inclusive. Yeah, well, I feel like um, going back to Can I Call You Tonight, like that was something the cool kids definitely loved, obviously. Yeah. Um, looking back, like how did that track kind of change things for you? And like, did you take any lessons from that, like when creating Day Glow, the album? Mm, definitely so. Yeah. I mean, Fuzzy Brain as a whole, like I really tried to look back and like, really embrace it because something I to understand like for a lot of artists is they like look back on their past work and like hate it and I'm mm -hmm. like I love everything that I've made and I love my music and I think it's crazy that what I did when I was 17 has created a, a career for me um songs like can I call you tonight it is really hard though because you can't like you can't put too much pressure on an anomaly, like mm -hmm. how it all rolled out and the time it existed was so crazy. Cause like TikTok wasn't even a thing yet. And then it releases and then like it does well on YouTube and then just back to back, like it just kind of happened and took its own like way on its path that it paved. Um, and I have had not that much to do with it. Like people just kind of ran with it. So hopefully they do that with my new songs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I tried to just like from the same spirit of like making the music channel that, um, mm -hmm. and not like try to make it. Can I call you tonight? Like part two, 
but just like take the same spirit of where I was when recording it and uh, copy that as well. Yeah. That yeah, it definitely does kind of, again, connect into the inner child always like yeah. yeah, going back to that place you were at when you made something so awesome for yourself and for other people. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Um, and like you, you have a North American headline tour coming up this fall, which mm -hmm. is super exciting. Like what yeah. would you say your favorite part of touring is? Um, man, I love touring in general. Like, I think it's really what I love to do. Like, I think Dayglow is a very um, live focused thing, like in person as much as possible. I think it's awesome. Um, my favorite part of touring, I just love like, I love meeting fans. I think it's so crazy how the internet connects people and like how people know about my life and what I do. Um, I love just like dancing with everybody. I think it's so fun to like play fun music and see so many people gather with pretty much the same goal in mind, which is like to have a fun time um, and to be leading that. I mean, it's, it's so um, addicting and, and awesome. Um, so yeah, I love it. I mean, there's it's, it can be exhausting, but it is just what I love to do. Like if I could tour forever, I would. So hopefully people keep coming to shows. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I think like the best part of a concert, I always say this in interviews and to people like just in general is that like the sense of unity and community you get in just the room where everybody is yeah. just like literally radiating love and energy. Like they yeah. are just, trying to have a good time and that's all that matters to them like it's not about mm -hmm. what's going on outside of that room with it's yeah. just like you and a bunch of people trying to have a dance party essentially yeah, so. yeah. And, and seeing like be like being something that people can like belong to like seeing uh friendships be made like waiting in line and stuff like that's just so awesome and like necessary now like mm -hmm. that people get together in person and like hang out it's awesome so yeah literally it's the best excuse to hang up and hang out and just like yeah. meet people around you yeah i love concerts and i'm so glad we're back in an era where they're just full-fledged so oh. um as someone who like handles every aspect of your music production, do you do the same thing with tour? Like, do you have all the sets in mind for stuff and whatever you want to like happen in the set list? Or is that kind of something you stay a little, stay a little hands off on? Um, I mean, I try to be as like not overbearing. Like th there's this feeling where, I mean, it is my show and like, it is, my music videos like i really want to i have a vision on how i want things to exist um but yeah I, I i try it takes a village for sure and i don't want to be like taking credit like you know there's some things that i just can't do like i can't program the lights um but i definitely have an opinion on how they should be programmed and stuff um, and yeah I'm, I'm definitely really involved with the vision on on stage production and um, how things exist. Yeah, um, I think it's so fun. I just, I see it all holistically. And I think more now than ever, like, like Gen Z notices every detail of anything. Like you could post a video of yourself talking and then they'll like notice how you said one word differently. And like, uh, like everybody's so detail oriented. And so with how you're representing yourself, you know, as a artist, I think, every detail really matters and mm -hmm. can make it this cool world. Um, so I, I try to be as like, as specific and detail oriented as possible. Yeah, definitely. I feel like for part of that, we have Taylor Swift to blame like all of her Easter eggs and yeah, she always yeah. has her fans on high alert. Like yeah. they have to look into everything. Every little detail means something. Yeah. Now, like, I feel like it's just trickled down. Like, 
now we're all looking into everything and like yeah. we've got so many video platforms that it's just like oh he said this a little bit differently than normal like does he have a new album coming or like <laughs> so it's definitely hilarious mm -hmm. um so when you are going on tour, what are like some essentials for you? Do you have like a specific, like what do you need on tour? Hmm. I mean, I'm getting more like, I'm as I get older, I'm becoming more curated of like what I like and like what I like to do and like specific. So um, I am living in a bus for the next like three months for the most part. Um, and, uh, you know, originally I might be, um, more like, yeah, I'll just take whatever. Oh yeah. Whatever snacks you have just as great. Um, but I, I, my sleep, I've, I gotta have good sleep and, uh, I have a very sensitive stomach. So like, I have to be specific about what I eat and stuff. Um, so I've, uh, I've like bought sheets and like specific sheets and I've like designed the color palette um with the help my, my wife's an interior designer so she like has yeah. made the back of the bus it's going to be awesome and I can't wait to see it all come together but I've like tried to make it feel like home as mm -hmm. much as possible um and then yeah with snacks I just got to be like careful because yeah I don't know you're just like moving around so much and you're always in like different circadian rhythms and like all these things that uh that matter so i'm, I'm very focused on uh physical and mental health um yeah I'm, I'm a pretty pretty focused guy about that kind of stuff Low key. yeah i feel like that's important on tour especially because you're literally living in a bus like yeah you've got to like stay as healthy as you possibly can or else it's just gonna you want to be a hundred percent for the shows. Yeah. Yeah. Feeding um, the grass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's so sick though, that your wife is an interior designer. So oh. that way like she can, I'm sure transform that space. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm excited to see, um, we kind of worked together. It was fun. Um, to make the room look awesome. So I'm stoked. Does she let you get like a little bit of creative control in the terms of the day? Uh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm an artist. So like right. we're, we're, oh. both, we're both artists and thankfully have really similar um, style, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was fun. I was like her, her client for this project. So it was awesome. Yeah. That's perfect. And so for the final question of the interview, if you have to pick, three favorite songs from day glow and i know it's like picking a favorite child so it's a little hard but what would they be um man like on the new record yes okay uh let's see mindless creatures i'll start there i yeah. think that's just like a really special song um there's tons of like lore and history to it um so that one's fun and awesome that it's on the record. Uh, I think Weatherman is a really cool song. Um, it's got a dope time change. Um, so musicians will like that. And then uh, the third, there's a song called Old Friend New Face on the new record, which I think is just like a total day glow song. Um, and it's kind of like the new hot rod in my opinion. Um, so I'm stoked for that one. I think it's, it's got a catchy hook. I love that. Hot Rod was also such a banger. So yeah. <laughs> we love a good day glow banger every time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love the album as a whole. I think it's awesome. And I think it's a great, like, as you said, introduction to who you are as an artist. Thank you. And so the album comes out September 13th which congratulations in advance. I'm so excited for you. Thank you. And that's all we have today. Awesome. So I'm going to the recording. I think we